Jada, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I've been so excited to meet you. Oh, wow. I went down a rabbit hole of Red Table Talk <laughs> when I first found out about the show. I think I did seven in my first sitting wow. because you can't stop watching it. It's so compelling. The subject matters that you're discussing, the way that you discuss them, and... It's just the rawness of it I, f- I found completely compelling and addictive. Oh. And it's really a beautiful setup having you, your mum, and your daughter there with three, at times, very varying opinions yeah. on subjects. Were you quite surprised at those reactions and those differing opinions when you were discussing certain things? No, I mean, that, that was kind of the beauty of the show when I thought about it. I was like, wow, we have three generations of women here and Gammy and Willow you know Willow's real new school my mother's real old school and I'm kind of both (laughs) kind of in the middle Mm. right and so uh, I thought that that would make for really interesting conversations um, at the table between uh, a family of women from those different generations I love Gammy. <laughs> yeah, she's a trip. She <laughs> is a brilliant. Yes. I was like, can I pull off a blonde pixie crop? Am I having my new hair? <laughs> exactly. She's just, a, I love, I love her. It's such a beautiful show. What I instantly was shocked about was your, I guess your full throttle courage to just say what you believe about any subject. Yeah. And I think that's completely refreshing as we don't, get fed much truth these days, yeah. you know, from social media to just the media. Man. We get a lot of very filtered information coming our way. And I love the fact that you three or whoever you have on as a guest, yeah. you are just being insanely honest. Has that always been something that you've prided yourself on, that you, you like to be honest? Or is this show kind of you know, sort of, I don't know, steered you in that direction a little more? It's it's definitely steered me in that direction a little more as far as um, being that way so publicly. Um, of course, in my life, you know, I've tried very hard to live as authentically as possible. And, you know, sometimes we don't even know when we're not living authentically. And this show has really... I wanted to create a safe space where... I myself could be more transparent and more authentic and that for my family and for other people yeah. because I, I do believe that, you know, in this in this particular day and age, we just, there's no safe space really to be your authentic self. And I think that the more true and the more authentic we can be, the more free we feel. And that is really my quest for this next half of my life is just to be free you know um and then to offer uh other people that step towards that journey because you know freedom is a journey (laughs) yeah Yeah, and it takes courage i think you have to be you have to be courageous but you also have to be vulnerable you have to be in a vulnerable space to be willing to step and, you know, like one of the episodes that really resonated with me was the motherhood one. Yeah. You're a mother, you're a stepmother, I'm a mother, I'm a stepmother. And that doesn't get talked about very At often. All. There's yeah. no books. There's no books on how to yeah. be a stepmother out yeah. there. And I, like you, was a stepmother first, yeah. then a mum. There's no information out there about that. No. So it was really refreshing to hear you talk about that. And also, I just loved that you were like, I'm going to step even closer and let's get Will's ex-wife to the table and we're going to talk. I thought that was just an amazing thing to watch. How did you feel going into that episode? I really loved it and I thought it was um, about time. I knew that hearing, I I felt like hearing both sides was really important to really understand how to navigate uh, through a relationship like that. And um, I was just so thankful that she was willing to come to the table. And, um, you know, we'd come through so much already. I mean, that conversation, there's layers even to that. There's Mm. even more to talk about, Mm. you know, in regards to that. But, you know, for her as well to have the courage and the vulnerability to um, 
speak her truth. And I, I just felt like that was a that that's probably one of my my favorite shows is because you're right. Nobody talks about it. And yes. surely to be in one space where you can see two women in that circumstance talk about it together. And it's uh, not rare anymore. It's not like no! a rarity. There's <laughs> blended families all over Top the bloody the place. place. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's really, people are nervous to talk about and it. Very nervous because there are families involved, there's children involved. Yeah. You don't want to, you know, and the thing, you don't want to blow anything up, right? No. And so I think the thing with Rhea and I is that um, Trey's an adult. Yeah. <laughs> we've been through, like, we've been, we've wrecked it. We've put it back together mm. again, wrecked pieces of it, put it back together again. So we've been through, you know, kind of all those transitions. So we understand very clearly um, what it is. So we could really um, help each other through it. Mm. Yeah. I love how you talk about family in general because what you've done beautifully with, again, the family episode where you're all sat at the table is you've all sat there and admitted your mistakes yeah. without shame attached to it yeah. and also um, allowing other people to go, oh, thank God I've done that too. Yeah. Because I think we all sit there and go, they've got the perfect life. Yeah. Everything's sparkly and amazing and yeah. it all goes swimmingly for them. And it's like, at the end of the day, you're a family yeah. and you've got family dynamic and stuff going on. And it was, again, highly refreshing yeah. to see you discuss those subjects and to say... We make mistakes and then you start again. You don't yeah. have to, you know, be condemned for life or feel awful about things forever. Exactly. And that's where people get so stuck in that shame yeah. and and sort of self loathing from moments like that. So yeah. I I loved that episode. I thought it was just a it was just a really special one. A really special one to watch. Um and I guess another theme that I was really seeing with a lot of the shows is we have all of these things in our lives that are not necessarily everyday or everyday ordeals. They're mm -hmm. not things that cause us this like horrendous pain every day. But we, you know, we have pushed them under the rug or we've, you know, suppressed them and they cause a lot of tension and we forget that. And you are having this cathartic process for us all to watch of, well, let's take another one off the list there. <laughs> yes. Does it feel like that, that you're kind of working through stuff on this show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Even when I'm not expecting to, you know. Um, I remember when we did the show on Lost and literally minutes before we were about to film, I got a call about the death of my girlfriend. And uh, I was like... How ironic is this, you know, that I'm going to be dealing with how I deal with loss in front of the cameras because mm. literally I'm, I have to figure out how to be with this while I'm working, you know. And so um, that was a really, really interesting show. Um, so all of them is I, I'm, I'm working things out. I'm working things out while I'm sitting there at that table with those cameras on and it's it's just freeing I think for me really dissolving kind of the idea that people who or myself I won't say people I'll say myself and my family because we live in the public eye that we have perfect lives I think Will and I both were just ready to really be rid of that you know um and and it takes a lot trying to hold an image of perfection or hold an image of like all is well all the time here and I think we were just ready to be human mm. and you you both talked about that prolifically in that episode because it looked to the outside world like you were mm. at one point living that dream you mm. know you were with the Obamas and you were on you know huge movie sets and mm -hmm. your kids were starting their own careers and everyone would make a ton of assumptions yeah. about that and it was really lovely to go, wow, look at what they were feeling and thinking during that time. <laughs> time. It was so different. Yeah. It was it was incredible. Did you go into that episode having any discussion about it before or was it just you got to the table and it was fresh, it all just came out? I think Will and I, you know, I, we asked each other, I was just like, you know, is there anything you, you don't want to talk about? Mm. And he's like, no. I love that. And I was like, okay, cool, let's go. Mm. And you have both um, redefined what marriage means to you at this point yeah. in your relationship. And that, again, was a lovely thing to hear. I, I wrote an article 
about my marriage right. over here a little while ago. How long have you been married? Uh, five years. Okay, got been it. Been together eight. Okay. And, you know, like every other couple, we have arguments. Yeah. And we have disagreements. And there are things that are going on because we have a blended family and there's all sorts of stuff constantly going on. Everyone's got their own agenda. And loads of headlines came from this article about how our marriage was on the rocks and right. we argue all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I was like... That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. That's not what I'm saying. Right. And I think, you know, regardless of being in the public or not, everybody looks at everyone else and goes, they've got the perfect marriage, they've mm-hmm. got the perfect family life. Yeah. And I, I loved hearing what you had to say about marriage and what what it means to you today. Yeah. Can you can you explain how you look at your relationship differently from back then to how you've redefined it and why it works better for you? You know, I think the, the the biggest nugget for me is the idea of emotional independence. A lot of times we'll go into, <laughs> I was talking to Will about this the other day, and it was really a, a trip because we definitely went into the marriage with different ideas of what it was going to be. And I think everybody does that. And you don't really, you think, oh, we're getting married. So everybody thinks it's the same thing. Mm. You know, the two the two partners that are involved, you're thinking, oh, it's the same thing. We're, we're going for the same thing because we're getting married. <laughs> right? And then you, you, you go through the marriage and you're wondering how, why there's certain walls you slam into. Well, because unbeknownst to each partner you're you're in search of different things within the partnership but you're continuously thinking you're in search of the same thing and you're doing the same thing and now you're in a confusion of why you're running into trouble yes right and after being with will all these years we're going this is 22 years for us now just realizing oh my goodness mm. we had two different priorities yeah we were in this for two different reasons right so now it's getting more in alignment <laughs> you know us being in agreement of like oh okay this is why we're doing this yeah but then also understanding that while we're in a partnership there's individual journeys mm-hmm. and my individual journey right now is emotional independence yeah, and recognizing that, you know, I think also we have incredibly unrealistic emotional expectations of our partners and that one day you just have to mature emotionally mm. and handle your own feelings, mm. cradle your own broken heart, mm. wipe away your own tears, collect your own smiles you can't expect people to do that for you. It's so true. Yeah. And to give each other space. Yes. Which often... It's uh, scary. It's scary. Yeah. People in marriage think, oh, is that a bad sign that things are going downhill? Or outsiders might think, why are they doing their own thing? Yeah. I, I think I've always been a big believer in, I know I'm fine on my own. I like being on my own. Right. I love my husband, but I like being on my own. Yes. I like doing stuff on my own. Yep. Is that a bad thing? And we're reaching that kind of now with, we're by no means like, we've got it sus now, we've redefined it, but certainly we've both gone, it's fine that we do our own thing. Absolutely. And that we have that space. And then we come together and we're rejuvenated and refreshed. And it's... Um, it's important. It is. Because it is. when you're talking <laughs> when you're talking about being with someone forever, yes. when that's the freaking goal, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Like, really? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, you know, okay, we're going to do this thing till death do us part. Yeah. Like, man, it takes some real um, examining and courage. And do you think constant communication? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <sighs> Even when you think you're communicating, you know, it's even that is a journey mm. in learning what communication is. I, I, I believe often we think just because we're talking, we're communicating. Yes. And that's not the case. It's like unless I'm able to transfer my ideas and I can, I can get some understanding, I can understand you, you can understand me. If we can have understanding, now we've communicated. Mm. If, we have, if, if there's no understanding and there's no clarity, we haven't communicated, even if yeah. we sat here and talked for two hours. Yeah. 
So do, do, do you find this, that's the same with other people in your life? You're Absolutely. Your friends? Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because um, I'm really shit with boundaries. I, I really struggle with... I really love this person, friend or whoever. Um, but of course, every relationship needs boundaries. Right. But I'm so scared they're going to think, oh, I don't want to hang out with you because you've said no yeah. or this is how I like things. That I find very, very tricky. And I and I loved the episode you did with uh, Gabrielle Union mm-hmm. when you, you reconnected with a, an acquaintance you hadn't seen for a long time. Yeah. And I'm imagining a bit of that breakdown was due to boundaries and understanding each understanding, other. Understanding, lack yeah. of communication, the whole thing. Immaturity, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And um, that was a really healing episode I for bet. she and I. Yeah, I bet. that was really healing. I, think, I give her a lot of props. She had a lot of courage to come to that table. What she said was phenomenal as well. I, yeah. I took guts to sort of say, look, I used to slag everyone off and yeah. say this person's this, that person's that. I thought that was, I don't, again, I haven't heard many people say that. Yeah. Admit that. Yeah. We've all done that. <laughs> yes. We've all done We've that. We've all done it. Yeah, who hasn't had a little gossip? Absolutely. We've all done it. And I think many people listening to this will have had friendships break down. Yeah. They will have drifted from people or um, or they'll be having a perfectly nice day and then that little thought pops up, oh, God, yeah. if I bump into that person or, oh, I should never have done that. Would you encourage people to try and make those reconnections or to stop fearing them so much? Yeah, I mean, it just depends. You know, I don't believe that all reconnections are necessary. I do yeah. believe that sometimes... You know, people come into your life for many seasons or sometimes for one season. It really depends on how heavy it is on you. If it's heavy on you, you know, if it's heavy, you want to figure out how to free yourself of that, Mm. whatever that looks like, you know. Um, But I don't think just because you're out of communication with someone that that means something's wrong. You know, it really depends on how it's affecting you Mm. that I really look at. It's like if it's tight or every time the person's name comes up, it's, you know, this this emotion, this, you know, heavy emotion or what have you. That's a lot to carry. Yeah. You know, and I've just realized even in my life, just really always just trying to figure out how to decrease the weight and really just have the courage to... Um, release myself and find um, whatever's needed for freedom and more peace. I was telling Will the other day, I was like, you know, I used to think that happiness was about pleasure. And it's not. My happiness really is about peace. Mm. I have so many pleasures that have brought me so much chaos and trauma. You know, and I really had to make that distinction, you know, in this journey. Well, it's funny that we often all think happiness is an end goal or something to be attained and or even joy or euphoria. And that, I guess, they're moments that are scattered throughout life and they'll just come. Yeah. But for you, it's peace or it could be contentment for someone else, grounding. Yeah. I think for me, it's just feeling okay. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Not being horrible to myself and going, you're a piece of shit or whatever. Just feeling like, oh, I don't really hate myself today. That's a good starting point. That's a great starting point. Well, it's better than always reaching for this happiness and it being a lofty feeling and something that, you know, is unattainable often. Or we try and get it in the wrong way. And it's about that peace. And like you say, we all carry around these backpacks of crap, uh, you know, that weight. And if you can find ways of reducing that, oh my God, life is easier. It's so much easier and so much more pleasant. But it's not easy, is it? It's not. It's not easy reducing that. It's not. You have to have so much courage. You You know, the courage I had to have to call Gabrielle. I can't imagine. Right. And call her, not only call her, but go, would you do it in one camera at the table? Just because I want women to see. I can't. Was your heart racing? I can't imagine. You know what? I would shit myself doing that. It was. It wasn't that my heart was racing. It's so interesting. My heart was so deeply open. Oh, I love that. 
you know it was so open and i was i was open for whatever answer yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just a blessing that she was like absolutely mm. it was a blessing because in that moment again you are vulnerable because you have to be ready for her to possibly say, say no, i'm sorry right. i'm not doing that and be okay be okay how and about that okay. and be okay that's why i think we're all so scared of reaching out to people is rejection it's the rejection and that that's the courage and, mm. and that's where you know the 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 intentions with our own hearts yeah you know and um that's once again that 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 reliability that emotional independence of not taking anything personally yeah that's hard. It's hard and being respectful of where other people are mm. and that it really doesn't have anything to do with you mm. and that it's okay. It's such an important thing to remember. It, it really is that if you are on the receiving end of that rejection, like yeah. you say, it's what they're going through. Yeah. Unless you've done something deeply awful that you really haven't been remorseful about. Right. But I think if it is just a breakdown and you're reaching out and it's not reciprocated, then... You can't take it personally. You just yeah. have to know you've done your best, I guess, yeah. and and go with that. <laughs>